ancient OS. Now this particular ROM is amazing. It comes with good performance, a lot of customization. That's the Android 11 story. Today we are talking about Mi 11X, also known as Poco F3 and the Redmi K40 and the Weeb edition. This is something different. It comes with beautiful wallpapers, some little quirks here and there and I've installed it yesterday. I've been testing it since then, you know, played games on it, consumed some AG content on it. All in all, working great and today is the complete review of Ancient OS Weave Edition for the Redmi K40, also known as the Mi 11X. So before we get into the complete review, if you haven't already, press you, you right there. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you chat with like-minded people a lot, well, join us on Telegram. We have more than a thousand people over there talking different devices and different custom ROMs. We're there on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. So join us there. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so in typical phone ops style, let's see what we have here. Ancient OS 6.0 Vivo G Apps Alpha Official. Now they're calling it an alpha. Trust me. Yeah, it, it's great if for an alpha. Download changelog support, donate, suggested firmware up to you. Well, I use the latest 12.5.5 because it's an Indian alloy in. SE Linux status is enforcing, safety net passes by default. And let's talk about the changelog real quick. So sync to last ROM sources, update to latest Optimus drunk kernel. That's what the kernel is. Add Vulkan support. So all you guys who love new state out there, you can use the Vulkan API on this ROM and this should perform great. I'll probably give it a try later when this ROM is even better. Add correct frontal camera punch hole dimensions, fixed screen recording set to 60 FPS, improve haptic feedback and vibration patterns. I can feel that. Fix some wake locks, fix deep sleep on AOD, fix 5G band stuck when LTE band is selected, disable proximity sensor on doors, improvements on ultrasound sensor and more that I don't remember. Every developer says this, right? Because these guys put in a lot of efforts. Now let's talk about this ROM. First of all, that wallpaper, it looks beautiful, right? This is how the ROM boots. Although themed icons is not enabled, you can go ahead and enable that from the theme settings and stuff like that. But the ROM looks beautiful. It is fluid. It is really, really smooth. I say that in almost all the Android 12 ROMs, but trust me, the reason I say that is if you're someone who has one of these devices and not tried custom ROMs on Android 12 for this device, go ahead and give it a shot. It's amazing. You'll, you'll love the smoothness. Even if you talk about the Google feed, just have a look how smooth this is. If you will ask me, you know, if it didn't have bugs, I would switch to any Android 12 based AOSP ROM just for the smoothness. So the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that you have very few icons. In fact, this ROM boots with minimal applications, which makes this ROM really, really fluid. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you have these beautiful quick tiles, which work absolutely fine. And as I did state early, the Google feed is there to the left and it works absolutely okay, right? Now, the other applications that you see over here are the ones that I've installed for testing, of course. And if you talk about the camera application, I don't see a camera application. So you might want to install Gcam or something, something that suits you. So if you press and hold over here, you will see that you have home settings. This is your typical pixel launcher, nothing to see there. And you have widgets, your Android 12 widgets grouped beautifully, working great. And yes, Monad UI in this particular ROM as well is doing a great job, right? Now moving on, if we talk about the quick tiles over here, you will see that you have screen recorder. Uh, as always, I have recorded a gameplay and I will show you to you guys towards the end of the video so you can determine if the built-in screen recorder is good or not. But the moment you go to the edit option, you will see that you have quite a few tiles over here, including these privacy access tiles. So you have ambient display, Heads up notifications can be disabled, CPU info, AOD off. So all these quick tiles and customizations have started making their way to Android 12 based custom ROMs. And that is something really, really neat, right? Now, if you talk about the quick drawer, it is smooth as butter. And if you go to settings over here, you go to about, you go to the Android version 12. You have all the information over here. This is the special Vivo edition. That's what they are calling it, right? And this is still ancient OS. It says Naruto over here. I, half of the things I think are in Japanese. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, November security patch and Android 12, of course. There you go. You have your Android 12 Easter egg working like a charm. Beautiful colors. 
Now, something that makes this ROM stand out is the settings menu. Now, you don't have any additional settings, but this particular customization section over here, Craft with Heart, trust me, they've added a lot of customizations. This is one of the very few ROMs which have a ton of customizations in Android 12. So you have status bar, themes, quick settings, buttons, power menu, gestures, navigation bar, lock screen, notifications, animations, battery, miscellaneous, and about. This is the about section, right? So if you go to status bar, you do have a lot of customization. Now, it doesn't make any sense for me to go to each and every customization option. If you want to see any specific customization option that is over here available or not, well, please pause the video and look for it because I'm scrolling through everything. Then in themes, you have the monet customization as well. The moment you select use custom color, you know, there you go it changes color so then you have quick settings you can enable or disable a lot of features over here you have buttons volume rocker wake and things like those working absolutely fine power menu well advanced reboot options are present so that's something neat and then you have gestures three finger gesture is for screenshot brightness control from here i'm not gonna touch that now navigation bar is blank one of the few settings which is blank and then if you go to lock screen you have the music visualizer customization available as well. Notification customization is available as well, including battery life. You have different animations that you can set that look really, really, really beautiful. And then you have battery section, which is blank. So I'm pretty sure they're working on it. And under miscellaneous, you have some basic information available. You don't really have the gaming mode over here. But talking about the gaming mode, if you go to the battery section, you do have thermal profiles. Although the 180 Hz touch sampling rate is still not present, but the gaming profile and stuff is there. So that should help you in your gaming experience. Now moving on, if we talk about the battery life over here. So let's see about battery usage. You, the slight charging that you see is because I had connected it to the computer. But screen has been used for 4 hours and 6 minutes and this battery is still at 43%. So in a real life scenario, you will get about 5-5.5 five, five hours of screen on time. And you do see that BGMI has been used extensively. So yeah, gameplay is superb. It's, it's pretty good. You will see that in the gameplay video shortly, like that small clip. Now, as far as the charging speeds are concerned, in less than two hours, it completed from say 5% to 100. Those are not excellent speeds, but this is a custom ROM and initial release. So charging speeds are working fine. Battery life is great. Now let's have a look at the screenshots because I did root this device to get 90 FPS. So first of all, you have Wido and L1 available. So your Amazon Prime, Netflix and everything is great. Then you have safety net passing, no banking applications issue. Device is certified in the Play Store, so that's neat as well. So, you know, all those basic things are definitely taken care of.
Now, as far as the benchmark numbers are concerned, I was constantly getting some errors. So this is an initial build. I don't know why that was failing. Probably it's something that I'm doing wrong. But all in all, the battery backup, the smoothness on this particular ROM, along with the amazing amount of customization that you have on this Vivo Edition is really, really great. You can definitely use this as a daily driver. There is some work left to do, but all in all, you can flash it, try it. It looks great. It works absolutely fine, including the Monet engine. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.